everyone. Welcome to yet another edition of Upfront with Frank Rothstein on Sky's Crescent Radio. Yes, Sky's Crescent Radio, the only sky with the letter E. Yeah, we're working on that. Everyone, please visit our website at skiescrescentradio.com just because it's a nice website. But if you're seeing us here live on this site, you got us anyway. Sitting with me is always a woman in her band in her band shirt, one of her merch. It used to be known as merchandise, but then it became a merch. Everyone say hello to the multicolored dressed Jade Zabrick. Jade has a lot going on. She's busy pressing buttons with her band, The Train Walkers, with her website, Sky's Crescent Radio. You can always find us here. You can find us on the website. You can find us on Facebook. You could find us on YouTube, all at Sky's Crescent Radio thing. You can always email us at Sky's Crescent Radio at gmail.com, Sky's Crescent Radio at gmail.com. Or you can always ask me a question. Upfrontfrank at gmail.com. Upfrontfrank at gmail.com. But what we would really like is to see you in the message area. Hello. I see Beatrice out there. Hello, Beatrice. Um, yeah, we got lots going on. Before we get to the stories, let me, well, let's talk about Jade. Jade, on her own page, has just become an affiliate, an affiliate streamer out here. And if you join and follow, jade's page and subscribe and all that stuff with her you can get a month free of amazon prime subscription there's a perk that's it it's a jade perk a perk with jade there you go a better perk than a pot of coffee so anyway go check out her page and please follow us out here give us a little follow let's see what's going on out here and of course follow and subscribe on YouTube. We always like people follow us. Not sure where we're going to lead you to yet, but we want people to follow us. You never know. We may go somewhere good, right? Uh, there is always something going on in the world, but for those of you who are watching us for the first time, let me just tell you what we do here. Besides me sitting in front of a nice picture of the Coney Island Cyclone, which is, well, I think turning 95 or whatever age it is, uh, I come from that part of the town, Coney Island, Bright Beach area. So, you know, kind of Brooklyn kid you're talking to. So if my attitude kicks in and my accent thickens up, you know, why, why, you know what the, so anyway, um, pretty much what I do out here is we talk about what's going on in the world. Some more of the, the more nonsensical stuff. Sometimes I have a couple of stories of things going on in the world that you find out from the headlines. I try not to. Today we have a couple. They're pretty good today. But for the most part, I find some of the more odd end stuff, you know, and I try to talk about that. <clears throat> I also cough on the air. I drink water on the air. And I'm letting you know now that the world is my prop. The world is my prop. That means anything that goes on around me while I'm doing this is for me to use on the air. If you have any questions and you put them in the stream, I will be happy to read them and answer them on the air. If it's something nonsensical out there you're trying to get me with, I'll be happy to use that too. If there's a fire truck outside or a motorcycle rider, well, they're mine also, which is why Jade sits there at attention all the time because she does anything, I'm going to use it. So we'll see what happens. What is happening today? Well, everything is social media. Elon Musk is in the process of buying up Twitter for $44 billion. That's the recorded deal. I'm not sure if it's the final amount. Maybe there's a couple, maybe he'll ask for a $10 discount. I don't know. See what happens. But $44 billion, Elon Musk will be buying it. Not sure how that would affect the regulations of. Uh, if there's a stock involved or what the board of directors will be doing, because it'll be a whole new company, at least a well-adjusted company. And you never know if you like buying that one, he may buy this one also. He may tell people what games they can play, what music they can play and all that. You never know. Well, Elon is more than welcome to be my guest at any time. And I'll be happy to give him one of my off, 
beat crazed interviews because I never script anything. Uh, well, yeah, so anyway, he is actually seriously buying up uh, Twitter. And it's a $44 billion deal. This was announced today. Yeah, even I get news on the same day. Um, this has been going on for a while because he has a lot going on. He has the money for it. He has Tesla, of course. He has SpaceX. Yeah, now he's looking for, now he's got Twitter, which is incredibly huge. And under the terms of the deal, shareholders will receive a $54.20 in cash for each share of Twitter, of Twitter stock they own. So they're getting tipped. Anyway, so yeah, he's looking to buy up stock. He's, uh, yeah, he's looking to buy up and get all this, get the biggest percentage he can. Because a lot of times you have CEOs of these billion, trillion, gazillion dollar companies, and they really don't own much of it. They get paid very well, of course, but you know they're worth fortunes, but they really don't own the company outright. So Elon Musk is trying to get up as much of it as he can. Listen, check out the news. It's all over your, all over the news, whether you're looking at it on cable or wherever, it's there. Uh, what else is going on in the world? Uh, we have lots of, in no particular order today. I, you know, when I stop talking, I can go back and forth and anything from serious to funny and back to serious again. This story, yep, there's a truck outside if you heard. This story is from Saturday. Um, there's a nut job everywhere. This was originally put out on ABC News. I found it on Microsoft News. That's because it was easy for me to get it. Uh, I was... Anyway, this is from originally from uh, WTBO. A man in California was arrested for reportedly threatening to bomb the offices of Miriam Webster this week, and, say last week, and kill its employees over the dictionary's definitions for women. That's according to federal prosecutors. It says Jeremy David Hansen, 34 years old, of Rossmore, California, was charged with interstate communication of threats to commit violence. That's according to ABC News. The charges, which came from an April 20th, uh, came from April 20th, were, on, were online threats that he allegedly sent to the Dictionary's company in October, last October. And that's according to the U.S. Attorney General's Office for the District of Massachusetts. There you go crime in California. Let's let's talk about it in Massachusetts. I never understood that. So anyway, it says the company receives several threatening messages from Mr. Hansen through its contact us section of its website, as well as on a comment section through web pages for, for the words girl, woman, Marion Webster was forced to close its Springfield and New York offices due to the threats. Okay, it says I also believe Wow, what's going on out there? This also says that um, Mr. Hansen sent a multitude of anonymous, anonymous threatening and despicable messages. I'm quoting, by the way, I don't use, I don't use words like despicable. Uh, despicable messages related to the LGBTQ community and of course, anything else you can think of. Well, I don't know, how's he feel about Jews? That's all I could say. Uh, yeah, so they got him. He's threatening everybody. Well, <coughs> I'm not sure what the punishment would be, if there's one at all. I'm not sure if it should be jail or a psych ward, but either way, they will deal with him. What else? Oh, th this one I actually like. I'm not sure what this would be in terms of money um, amounts, but this is a bill. I read this also coming up quick. This came out, I think, yesterday that a bill in Tennessee would require drunk drivers to pay child support to minors is headed for the governor's desk. It says drivers convicted of vehicular homicide, intoxication, and aggravated vehicular homicide would be ordered to, by the court to pay child maintenance or child support if the victim was a parent. Okay, the payments would continue until the child reaches the age of 18 or has graduated from high school. Now, if you're thinking it's the same thing, no, not always, because some kids 
you know, miss the 18 mark and it does become 19. It does happen. They don't want to supersede At least that's what we used to call them. Spokesman for Governor Bill Lee told ABC News he will review the legislation. And when it reaches his desk, the bill passed unanimously in the state, in the state house and senate. So he will go over it and see what happens, which means the governor can sign it or veto it. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure how that would work out in terms of monetary uh, payments because you know every every state is different. You know, at least in this particular state, I'm not quite sure what the value of this is as far as child maintenance, because any minor will be living with a relative or hopefully not with state custody, you know, if necessary, um, or foster system. So I'm not, sh I, I don't know if the money will be put in the child's like in a trust for the child, for the minor, I should say. And um, I, I would like to make sure that it's used for to benefit the uh, person it's being intended for. That will take some monitoring, I guess. But yeah, that's an interesting law. I don't know that somebody whose parents were killed by a drunk driver would want someone like this in their life forever, but at least till they're 18. But hopefully it could be worked out where if it passes, the money goes to where it's supposed to go and not just uh, collected. Who knows what happens to it? So we'll see. Right? We'll just have to see. Um, let me get to this story in a couple of seconds. No, and yeah, I know we're still talking about Will Smith, and I really thought I wouldn't talk about it, but this is more about Jada Smith, only because this is from April 21st, a few days ago. There was some, you know, she has that talk show thing red table, whatever it's called, and she used this thing that her family is focused on deep healing. I don't really care about the story. I'm, I'm looking at the word deep. Why is it? I mean, so many times you see someone talking about one thing or another with healing, they're reflecting, they're thinking, they're this, they're that, they're always in deep, deep healing. What is deep healing? I mean, if I break my arm, and somebody has to set it. Are we having deep setting? I mean, you're healing. Is it, you call it a healing process? You're healing. This word deep to add the drama to it. Let's leave out the drama, shall we? It's enough going on. Deep healing. Uh, you know, I don't know how old their kids are now, but their kids are kids and they're just going about their business, I'm sure. I mean, Jada, well, she's still getting paid for her talk show. Will, well... His deals have dried up for a while now, so we'll see what's going on there. But deep healing, I think the guy could use a deep drink and some help. But either way, yeah, everything's deep. These, these overdramatic terms for, for one thing or another, it's, it's ridiculous. Deep healing. Deep healing. Well, I know what I could do deep. Am I doing, let's see, I'm trying to lose weight down about 40 pounds. Yes, I am. Am I deep dieting? Jade, am I deep dieting? <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, right? Tomorrow morning, I think if I get up, if I go when I start doing stuff later on, I'll get really dirty. Am I taking a deep shower? Am I deep cleaning? Let's just keep putting deep on it. Later on, I'll have a deep dinner. What should I have for my deep dinner later on? Come on, people, get into that stream. Tell me what I should have for, for my deep dinner. <laughs> Speaking of my dinners, almost every night on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, I type in the word, what's for dinner? Just gets people talking. And most of the people I know on Facebook have been following me long enough. They know me for years enough. But they've been watching since I started working on my weight. And I always tell people I'm going to wash the tuna. So washing tuna fish. What does this do exactly? People, I get a lot of them asking me, what, what exactly are you talking about? Well, I'm not exactly throwing it in the washing machine. No. Pretty much all I'm doing is I'm opening up cans of tuna fish. Those little hand strainers you buy, you know, you pour a little can, whatever. 
I'm rinsing it off in cold water, even though a tuna is packed in water. I'm washing off the residual, any remaining oil and salt that's on the outside. The way I learned it early on, reduce the salt, reduce the fat, because you need salt to retain. Otherwise, it's just water. It leaves you. So I'm always putting on washing the tuna. And then I swap out mayonnaise for low fat cottage cheese. Now I got rid of fat, very little, very little, very little salt. And pretty much it's just all protein. So I'm happy with that. But I get a kick out of watching people, their responses. First thing is they're typing in the dinners. Some of the, some of the things they're having look pretty good. I always ask people to send me stuff, but no one sent me anything so far. If I'm, if I'm relying on my friends through the mail, I'm starving to death. But that's just what I'm doing. I get a kick out of how people interact. At it. So everyone out here on Twitch, tell me what's for dinner. That's what I want to know. And Jade's going to type in into the stream what she's having for dinner. Jade, what are you having for dinner tonight? What are we doing? Oh, come on. Type some. Be a sport. Help me out. She, she's not helping. She's not helping. There you go. What's for dinner? No, not I already asked that. I'm asking you, what are you having for dinner? I'm talking to a TV screen here. My monitor looks like a TV. This monitor is actually bigger than my old kitchen television. Chicken. There you go. Chicken. Okay, great. I may go for fish. I don't know. I'll see what happens. Anyway, back to back to the rest of the world's nonsense. Um Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, well, we all remember a few weeks ago that, uh, oh, there's so many good stories. I don't know which one I want to read first. Let's get rid of this one. This one I like, it should have been first, but the hell with it, it doesn't deserve headlines. Our former president, Donald Trump, has been held in contempt of court and he faces 10,000 a day fine. <coughs> That's according to the attorney general's office. The probe. He has failed. See, even I need water. He failed to comply with the subpoena, still failing to do it. And he is now in contempt of court, 10,000 day fine. I'm sure he'll fight it and see what happens there. But, well, President Don is having his problems. He's spending millions and millions on campaign rallies. For a presidency we don't know that he'll run for yet. I think he just likes having TV time. And he'll be shelling out 10 grand a day to the state. I can live with it. Okay. This is a story. Before, what is this? I want to make sure one second here. Okay. One of the stories we've been talking about for a while is transgender athletes. So we know that Leah Thomas, the swimmer, you know, she trans transgendered into womanhood. I don't know if she's, I don't know if she had the final surgery or not, but okay. Anyway, in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee, Tennessee will soon add harsh penalties against public schools that allow transgender athletes to participate in girls' sports on the legislation recently signed into law by Republican Governor Bill Lee. Um, it does not say what the fines will be for public schools. I guess you can't do anything about private schools, but okay. Um, somehow I like this. And no, it is not about me not respecting people's rights. Or, you know, live your life the way you want to, but keep respect. You're going to start telling everyone you're a woman at the age of 18, 19 years old. You've spent your life as an athlete training as a male. Your body mechanics are that of a, are that of a male. Your strength levels are that of a male. Even if you take medication to lower your testosterone levels, you are still pretty much a male, at least in competitive sports. You want to talk about the debate team? You're only as good as your brain allows you to be. But as far as competitive sports, and then we've seen this in mixed martial arts. We saw it all this year in swimming. We saw it, we've seen this a lot of times. In basketball, we were talking about it last year, a year before. It doesn't work. And I got news for you. It may not work equally if we have a transgender male. Just because a, woman, a female wants to become a male, and again, 
take medication, increase testosterone, go for surgery, you know, find a way to grow a beard. It does not mean you are physically large enough, strong enough to compete. So if I took one division, because it's a trans division, and I took transgender female and transgender male and put them in a boxing match, I promise you, transgender female will win every time. And then it comes back to the same basic argument of male versus female in contact sports. It is just certain things that do not work. And at times it could be dangerous. Do you think I really care if you want to see a man and a woman compete against in bowling? I really don't care. Let them play ping pong. Let them do what they want. Knock yourselves out. But when there's a physical competition where it really does matter, whether someone's a male or a female, from a physical point of view, it does matter. It does count, especially in schools and competition where let's say you have to be in the top 16. That, that was the example used for swimming because there were two transgender females, two trans women in the swimming competition. If they are not there, the top 16 make it because they are there taking the first and second spot. The bottom two that would have made it anyway now cannot make it. That would work the same way in track and field. That would work in a lot of places. So, yeah. Um, I don't think this is the worst law I've ever heard. Someone's going to be offended. What can you do? You know, there's always something to offend somebody. What else can you do, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I had a staring cough. Um, there, there was an article this week that came out on the 22nd, so it's a few days old. I got this off of vice.com. And the headline is, young people are lonelier than ever. It says 30% say they don't know how to make friends. And they never felt more alone. Well, let's see, it says at the beginning of 2022, a TikTok video of a tearful woman talking about friendship and loneliness made the rounds on Twitter. Got that on Twitter. I have people who I have people who love me and who care about me, but it was so clear that I'm a tier two or tier three friend that resulted in me having to spend the last two years literally alone. Uh, spends a lot of time trying to figure out what I did, what what I do in my life it resulted in me being so lonely. I thought I had cultivated a stronger community. Okay, you got that. She thought that her Twitter friend thought her social media friends or her friends. <clears throat> All right. You got the idea of what's going on here. Let me tell you what I think about. This is something I've talked about a lot of times, whether I'm out here or I'm actually talking to people. People on social media. Using the word friend too freely. Yeah, you talk to each other all the time in the chat room. They leave you a nice little comment. You're presenting yourself in a certain way. You know, contrived perfection, as I, as I like to call it. You're looking to be perfect. You want everyone to like you. That's what the like button's for. Or people send you their little emojis of hearts or a thumbs up or whatever the hell they send you. And they're not your friends. Well... They're a music, if you're a musician, they might like the song you're singing. If you were in a chat room, they know, maybe you could say something, you know, have a conversation about some subject. I mean, I am uh, on Facebook. I am in many boxing groups. I love the sport of boxing. I am an administrator of one group. And we talk all the time. And believe me, when people disagree with you on social media, they disagree with you. And so I always tell people, never make it personal. Or as Mike Tyson would put it, social media, a place where people could say things to you that they wouldn't have the nerve to say to you in front of your face. And people want to be seen as perfect. Now, depending on the age, I'm going to say a woman, for all I know, she's 18. I don't know how old this person is. The, on social media, they're not your friends. Now, from seemingly, when you look at us out here in the show, you see Jade on one screen, you see me on the other screen, and it looks like, well, we're on social media, but Jade and I actually know each other. I mean, we, I've gone to her concerts. We worked together at this radio station when we had a studio together all the time. 
We don't have to see eye to eye every time on every last subject, but we're going to see each other. It's just the way it worked out. Um, that's when you really know somebody. When you see somebody on social media, if you say something they don't like, they block you. They unfriend you. They block you. It's just the way it is. Matter of fact, you want to feel less lonely in life? Go out. Go talk to people. Don't order it. Don't get all your food from some app somewhere. Don't call up DoorDash or Uber Eats or Seamless or anyone else that you need an app for to get it. And don't pay the extra credit card fees because the uh, delivery service takes a higher price. I, I'll tell you this. Here's the math of it. If you go out for dinner and tip the waiter or waitress, if you tip the bartender, you are spending the same money that if you actually went out and actually if you called it in and had it delivered. Go out. Go get your morning coffee or your lunch or somewhere, and maybe, you never know, you might just have a conversation, and you may just make a friend. That's just all I could see it as. When you're on any kind of social media, unless you really know them, really know them in real life, they're not your friends. I mean, there are some people I, I've been speaking to. There are a few people on Facebook that I've been talking to. Before you say, oh, Facebook is for older people. Well, yeah, I'm probably older than you are. But... I'm, I'm on social media longer than you are, so that means I was on when MySpace was the thing. I was on when AOL had all the chat rooms, but I was on MySpace when that was the original social media app for things like this. And there are a couple of people out there that as we moved away from it onto Facebook, onto Instagram, we sort of followed each other. So matter of fact, when I got COVID in the very beginning, a couple of years ago, couldn't believe it. A woman from Germany that I'm probably never going to meet offered to send me anything I needed. That is about as close to saying someone is your friend as you're going to get. And even though we're never going to see each other, we're never going to have dinner together, nothing like that. But again, we get along real well, and she's a very nice person for doing it, but we're not that kind of friends. We don't see each other. When things are tough, we can't hug each other. We can't just drive by the other one's house and grab them and go get something to eat. You want to make friends, get off the of social media, get out of your house, put your tablet down. Don't be afraid to turn off your phone for half an hour and just talk to somebody. It is not the end of the world. You never know. Maybe if it's someone you really get to know, they'll buy you a drink. They'll buy you your morning coffee. Maybe the house will buy you one. You know, the, the person behind the counter says, yeah, it's on us today. It happens. It just happens. You know, I mean, how else are you going to meet people? How are you going to make friends? Not by sitting on a telephone and, you, and your whole life is on a four-inch screen. That's ridiculous. That's completely, that's completely ridiculous. So, yeah, maybe, and also maybe if people get out, of their house and go meet people and talk to people and actually experience human interaction or pet the occasional dog that passes you by. Maybe the suicide rates will go down because people are so lonely or when someone criticizes, especially a kid, kids need to get out. Especially when, when someone criticizes whoever that, you know, they don't get like 10,000 criticism, you know, you got a, a zit on your nose. That means everyone's going to come in there and comment, oh, look at her, look at him. Blah, blah, blah. No, don't do that. No. no. Nobody cares where your the pictures of your vacation in front of a tree are. That tree could be anywhere. That tree could be, if you're in Manhattan, that tree could be in some, some upstate wherever. It could be in Central Park. It could be isolated to a tree on your block. It doesn't make a difference. Nobody really cares. Go meet people, get out of your house, go meet everyone. And you will maybe just, maybe you'll meet, maybe you'll meet the love of your life. Well, maybe you'll just meet somebody you can say hello to every now and then. I do. I walk around my neighborhood, and there are about five dogs who love me. It means I talk to all their owners. And we just sit there and talk for a while while the dog is getting scratched. I'm a happy guy. So like I say, texting, whether you're leaving a message in the stream chat, whether you're leaving a message in someone's private direct message box, no matter where you are, texting is not talking. Try talking. It's about as good as I can say it. Try talking. 
<sighs> Let's get to some other crap. Okay. Oh, by the way, Joe Rogan, remember about a month ago, everybody wanted to cancel Joe Rogan because he said a few things. Well, Joe is saying that he, after cancel culture tried to get him, he gained 2 million subscribers. Somehow, I think the cancel culture is eh, maybe uh, losing its grip. At least they need something juicy to cancel. What else is going on? What else is going on? This story here, this came out a couple of days ago on the 24th. Uh, the headline says, Inside Creepy AI, Artificial Intelligence, AI, that brings dead people back to life by animating old photos. So pretty much there are people in the world who miss, miss the people they lost and they send the service their old photo, the old photo of whoever it is, the picture they like the most, I guess. And through technology, once scanned into the computer system, they bring that photo to life. So link, link, you can do a lot of things and you can see whoever, Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, you can see your old friend smile at you again. I don't know. If, I think it's a little bit ghoulish myself. That's not my type of thing. But um, of the people I have lost along the way, I can pretty much remember their smiles. I can remember a lot of old conversations. Remember a lot of things. I can tell you who introduced me to the music of my favorite musicians. Two of, my, two of my favorite musicians, and that was in 1996. I can tell you exactly where, where it happened. You, you know, people mean enough to you. You don't need a tech service. But this is what it does. It does, it scans the photo you give them. And in a way, you're seeing them again. I'm not quite sure if you're really seeing them. I'm not really seeing them, but on your computer screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then again, you can send them pictures of whoever from like a hundred years ago and see what they could do with it. But uh, you know, so you send people what you want. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I don't know if that's for me or not, but yes, you can do it. Just look up artificial intelligence photos. I'm not plugging a company for this. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. A professor, this story came out on April 19th. A professor, I got this from Yahoo Finance and CBS News, of course. Professor awarded $400,000 after being disciplined over wrong pronouns. It says a Shawnee State University professor who was disciplined for using the wrong pronouns when addressing a transgender student is being awarded four hundred thousand dollars after a lawsuit against the university. You know, after a lawsuit against the university, excuse me. Nick Merriweather, a philosophy professor at the Ohio School, declined to use either she/her pronouns to refer to a transgender woman, and that's according to uh, according to the Alliance defending freedom, excuse me, Alliance Defending Freedom, a legal organization that focuses on religious freedom and free speech cases that represented Maryland. Okay. So it said here, Professor Merriweather responded to a student during classes by saying, yes, sir. The student asked him after class to use the she, her pronouns when addressing. But he said no. The student filed a complaint and the university lost, launched an investigation. And uh, whether offered to use the student's name, but not pronouns or titles. The university ruled that he, should, that, that he should use the correct pronouns, but the professor argued, speak contrary to his religious convictions or philosophical beliefs. Okay, so, you know... The university determines it's a hostile environment. Oh, I'm, re I'm reading this thing, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> Professor filed a lawsuit against the university officials, which they tried to have dismissed in 2021. 
the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit ruled in favor of Meriwether reversing a district court's dismissal of the suit. And the university is going to pay the professor $400,000 in damages. Well, okay. 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 There you go. Um, I don't believe... Uh, I mean, I don't use pronouns for anyone in talking to anyone in general. They have a name. Certainly when, when this person goes to for a job and wants a paycheck, it's not going to, the check's not going to be made out to she, her, it's made out to a name. Uh, he, he wants to go by name, let him use the name. That's what I thought. But okay, there was a lawsuit Professor collects 400 grand. Big precedent. Make no mistake about it. Big precedent. Because that is now going to carry over to many other places. Uh, let's see. Let's get back to the schools, shall we? There's an after school Satan Club voted down at York County Elementary School. <laughs> York County, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, PA. Okay. Could an after-school Satan club be coming to an elementary school near you? On Tuesday eve evening, the Northern York, Unif Northern York County School Board members voted down the approval of the program. The program designed for children as young as five says it, does, it doesn't worship Satan, but uh, what exactly does it teach? So, yeah, we don't know what it, they, they don't worship the devil, but we don't know what they're teaching. Hundreds of people showed up, many outraged, there's always that word outraged, of course, <laughs> over the thought of laying Satan into the schools. Um, <laughs> well, but the satanic temple explains is not devoted to worshiping Satan, but rather teaching rational and scientific ways of thinking. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I would not... Well, if I had a kid, I want, wouldn't want my five-year-old learning about Satan to begin with. But if if I was an atheist, this could this could be an interesting conversation. If I was an atheist, right? Why would it be okay to teach about God, but not about Satan? Both two non-tangible characters. You cannot reach out and touch God. You cannot reach out and touch Satan. So I'm sort of wondering now, of course, I know the answer to this. But if I wanted to play, sorry to say, excuse me, but devil's advocate, that would be an interesting conversation, which would not hold up in court, but okay. So anyway, according to the Satanic Temple, a couple of parents from the district asked for the program in response to the board greenlighting a Bible study group during school hours. So there you go. Why one, but not the other? Anyway, it, it was voted down. Your, your kid's not going to come home as one of Rosemary's students. <laughs> God. Uh, and that's that. That's what's going on there. Okay. What's going on in the world of sports? Shaquille O'Neal says he'll take $100 million to coach the Lakers. That's right. Shaq is interesting, interested in becoming the next in line of retired LA Lakers to coach the team. Only thing is he wants a hundred million dollars to take the job. If says if the Lakers offer me 25 million for four years, I'll what? I'll coach the Lakers. Okay. I need a four-year contract. Well, I can understand why an incoming coach would want a multi-year contract. That he wants 25 million. I don't know about that one. Other other than the fact that he's Shaq and people will come to see him doing it. I don't know that he's a coach. I don't know that he's an assistant coach. The man couldn't make a free throw because he never quite understood what he was doing wrong. But um, he's, the example here is for the New England Patriots, Bill Belichick is believed to be the highest paid coach in North American pro sports with a reported 18 million a year. Shaq wants to break that. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, yes, the Lakers could use a little bit of help. I don't know that it's Shaq. But if he can get $100 million for this, he's a small and smart guy. Oh, man. 
what else is going on here? Oh, this is just a lot of stuff going on. This is incredible. Do I want to read about that? No, I'm going to read about this one. In New York, in New York, they're weighing the, the, the pros and cons of giving pizza joints, as I quote, pizza joints and other eateries, the okay to sell cannabis-infused food. Well, there you go. This is not a new concept of how to uh, incorporate pot marijuana into your food. I knew a guy used to make pot cookies all the time. But this is what's going on in New York. I guess places need to make money, and you know, pot for the most part is legal. You know, you, I mean, you can't give it to a minor, but it's legal. So I guess if they're making chocolate chip cookies with not with cannabis in it, they'll have to have two sections for the eighteen and over. At least make make sure you're making a good cookie. Nobody likes a bad cookie. But this is uh, one of the things being uh, debated and discussed. Cannabis uh, food. Well, since it's a leaf, like a lot of other leaves, I guess you can put it in soup. You can, uh, if you can make a pesto out of it, that would work pretty cool. Yeah, make a pesto out of it. Looks like the same color leaf. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, there's nothing new about it. It's just a matter of giving somebody a license to do it. We'll see what happens. You know, it's whatever, whatever, whatever. Ah, my, oh my. And let us talk about one of my favorite subjects, the Oreo. The Oreo, even so much so that MIT has been studying this cookie introduces oreology, the study and flow and fracture of sandwich cookies to investigate Oreo to see if the cookie itself with the filling can be evenly sliced down the middle. So there's no, there's no more on one side than the other. It would look the same if you opened it up. And I'm looking at this, this picture here. They're using math equations for it. They're looking at what angles, what area, where to do it at. They're using machinery. Am I an Oreologist? I hope so. I am an Oreo purist. Well, let's see what happens here. It says Crystal Owens, PhD candidate at, and mechanical, in mechanical engineering at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, the pursuit of equal cream ratio in Oreos which are prone to splitting with one side being nearly dry along is a lifelong dream. See, I'm not the only nut that comes to Oreos. Uh, <laughs> I've always said Oreos are the most interesting cookie. They are a great cookie. They're near perfection. It really upsets me when people put flavors in them. I want to slap the, the person in the video who's putting a fork inside the cream to dunk them neatly in the glass of milk. You got to stick, you got to get in there. You got, you got to get in there. I don't want cakes made with it. I don't, I was watching a video the other day. Someone took a bunch of Oreos in the bowl with eggs, with cream, with this and with that. And they made a cake out of it, a whole different type of cake. All that is with the extra sugar you it is, is a big cavity waiting to happen. And if you're a diabetic, you couldn't even cheat with this thing. You're going through an automatic coma. And all you're really doing is mutating the Oreo. Leave the Oreo alone. It's perfect. I've said it before. There are only two things, two, perfect in the universe. The sun, only because we haven't figured out a way to screw it up yet. And the Oreo, which we have had a way to, we have figured out a way to screw it up. Leave the Oreos alone. They are the best thing to come in a package. I wish I could eat them all day long. I'm looking at this. They have all kinds of machinery over here. They're trying, they're trying to separate it by, by machine to see what's called a rheometer, R-H-E-O-M-E-T-E-R, or by hand. Well, there are easier ways to separate Oreos. One is if you have it warmer, like at room temperature, and the warmer it is, the easier it is that when it comes apart. If you put it in the refrigerator and try to separate it, that can become a thing depending on how cold it gets. But see what I'm seriously discussing here? Separating Oreos. Uh, <laughs> leave the Oreo alone. Can people just 
leave it alone. Just, yeah, leave it alone. We're coming up done soon here. Uh, my last official story for the night is a rest in peace. Kokain Kane Tanaka. Kane Tanaka was the world's oldest person who died at the age of 119. That story came out today. She, the world's oldest person has died in Japan at age 119, according to a statement released by the country's Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare. Kane was born in January 2nd, 1903, and died on April 19th. The Guinness Book of Records said there was sad to hear it to hear of the passing, and the news of her death had been confirmed by se senior gerontology consultant Robert Young, who also helped confirm her record as the oldest person alive back in 2019. Wow. She's also recorded as the second oldest person ever. And the old that's one behind Jean Calment, who lived to 122. But yes, 1903, just died at the age of 119. That's pretty incredible. My grandmother, she lived to 109. She was a couple of months short of 110. 119. Wow. That's a long, that's a long, great run. Rest in peace, Kane Tanaka. So this is what we do here. Hopefully you like what we're doing. We will be rating people. We will be talking to people. Again, if you have a chance, please go over the Jades. Well, besides following us here and subscribing here, go over to Jade Zabrick's uh, Twitch page. Give her a follow. Give her a subscribe if you can. Just takes a couple of seconds. Watch her music. She shows you how to put, put music together, one piece of machinery at a time. Starting off with a quick beat, a quick drum beat. Then starting from there, never know where it's going to go. Only Jade knows. That's more than the shadows. Um, everyone else, it's been fun out here. It really has. It's been good today. I like the stories I'm talking to. Sometimes I don't sound all that smooth if I'm laughing or just looking at a word that I'm having trouble pronouncing because I never used it before. You know, you know, I got, I got to, I got to speak simply, simply. Uh, everyone, when you get a chance, upfrontfrank at gmail.com. Tell us what you're having for dinner. Matter of fact, leave a comment here. Tell us what you're having for dinner. That's what we want to know because it is dinner time. I don't know what I'm having yet. I may wash the tuna and then I may go get some dinner, actual food. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll be back out here again next Monday, five o'clock. And we will see what's going on. Maybe I'll bring in a few uh, guests. Maybe I'll try to bring in a guest or two here or there. Keep things interesting. They can tell me their stories. We could talk to them, see what they're up to, whoever that may be. And tonight, if you have a chance on Facebook at 8 o'clock, go to Live Music Mondays, L-I-V-E-M-U-Z-I-C-M-O-N-D-A-Y-Z. -E and that's where my friend Kat hosts her show. Her, her and her friends playing some songs for you. And go check them out. Actually, you can probably find them out here also on the Hot Indie Media. I-N-D-I-E. Hot Indie Media. And we will be following them also. Jade, please follow Hot Indie Media. And um, that's what we're doing. Tomorrow night, if you're in Manhattan, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, the Thompson Chemist, 132 Thompson Street, is the Thompson Street Medicine Show. Again, our old friend Kat, who's been on this show more than any other guest you know, in a long while. But um, she's been, I think she's been on here at nine times, ten times, I don't know. But um, that's one of the shows she's part of every second, fourth. And if there is a fifth Tuesday of the month, that's from 6 to 8 p.m. Music is always good. And that's what's going on. Everybody, I'm glad you tuned in. Want to see you again. Next time, I'm going to ask every week, what's for dinner? And I'd like someone to tell me what they got. We know Jade's having chicken today. I, that took work to get that information out. I don't even want to know what the side dishes are. This could be work, and I have, I'll be breaking a sweat. Uh, 
Okay, everyone, I'll see you next week. Have a good night. Thanks for coming.